Hello everyone and welcome to the Quampedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today we will talk about active versus passive life cycle saving strategies. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Vojtko, I'm CEO and Head of Research at the Quampedia. Today we will discuss saving strategies. So I will show you how to do the analysis of the future outcome of the saving strategy. We will discuss what is the difference between the active and the passive saving strategies and what is life cycle and how to incorporate the active investment strategies or active trading strategies into the life cycle saving strategy. Firstly, I mean the concept of saving is really important in financial planning. I mean all of the people like to accumulate the wealth, they do not want to go into retirement without sufficient wealth. There are different strategies how to approach the savings. Classical is the passive approach. When somebody who would like to save into the passive portfolio that consists of one ETF or some portfolio of ETFs, that portfolio doesn't change over the time. So we are investing or saving into the same strategy or into the same underlying instrument all of the time during the whole saving period. Uh, it's not the only one, there is also the life cycle lodging. The life cycle logic is a strategy that advocates for transition from higher risk to lower risk assets throughout the time. The logic of the life cycle is that at the beginning of the savings, you are not risking a lot of the money because you just started to save. So you can select an instrument or strategy that's risky but offers a high return. I mean, move into the saving horizon to the end of the horizon. You will switch from the risky assets into the more defensive assets like uh, fixed income. And in case, you will protect the money that you already saved. That's the life cycle. What we did is that we obtained some data. So we obtained uh, multi performance data for nine different asset classes. And one of the asset classes was our pragmatic asset allocation model. If you are interested about that, you can read about that model more in the independent article. Very quickly, what is pragmatic asset allocation? It's a global tactical asset allocation model that rotates among the risky and uh, defensive assets based on the current trend and the current macroeconomic situation. So this is one of the underlying assets into which somebody can save and we also included 200% leverage stocks designed to deliver twice the daily performance of their benchmark. I mean, the reason for that is that we wanted to have some asset that offers a really high performance, but with a high risk. Additionally, we added NASDAQ 100, Global MSCI World Index, MSCI Emerging Market Index, 10-year US Treasury bonds, gold and commodities and cash. Those are our underlying assets and we were testing what is the final result when you try to save individually into those assets. Our analysis begins in uh, November 30, 1926. So we have over 96 years. But now let's imagine that you would like to save for 20 years. So it doesn't make sense to use only the last 20 years and base your strategy on the last 20 years. So what you will do is that you take 20 years from that 96 years period. Uh, you will test how the strategy performs when you save in those 20 years and then you move by one year. So you start in, no in November 1926, but you start in 1927 and then you start in 1928, 29, 1930. And in this case, you will get 96 different 20 year periods of the savings strategies and you will see what is the whole distribution of the results at the end of the period when you start the save and I mean at the end. So how much money you actually can gain from the savings when you started in 1926, 27, 28, etc., etc., and if you had the saving strategy where $100 is saved and invested monthly for a period of 20 years. Once we have the whole distribution, then we are interested to see what are the outcomes at the fifth. 25th, 50th, 75th and 19th percentile. We pay particular attention to the 25th percentile because we want to adopt conservative stance. So we assume that yeah, 25th percentile of the distribution is save uh, guess what the future can uh, give you if you try to save. We do not like to use the median or 15th percentile because we consider that quite optimistic. So we are rather using conservative guess of how the future will look like. That's enough talk. Now let's check the first idea, the passive strategy. So we are trying to invest or save $100 each month to SPI, so to S&P 500, to US stocks over the period of 20 years and how will the result look like. So here are the results in the table. So in the fifth percentile, our final size of the portfolio is $37,000. If we save $100 monthly for 20 years, we invested 24,000. And in the fifth percentile, which is like very, very conservative, we will get over $47,000, uh, but we will have a drawdown of over 81% and we will have a loss, which is, I mean, what is the last value of the money compared to the top 
or to the highest value of the money, minus 75%. So 25%, as we said, is something that we can expect. So we saw our return will be around 53,000. I mean, the optimistic scenario is 75,000 or over $1,000. Uh, but drawdowns are high, so we have 45% drawdown. So this is how growth savings across the percentiles look like. And here is the a very conservative scenario. So the 10 percentile, we will get just over $40,000. And here is very optimistic, so we can get over $1,000. So this is how the saving account can grow across the percentiles over the 20 years. This is our benchmark. So this is how does it look like. Now, the question is, if we change the underlying and we try to save into different assets. So in this moment, we still have the passive strategy. So we invest or save still in the same underlying, still 100%. But into different assets. So here we have the US stocks, and for the comparison, here we have the leverage stocks, here we have a NASDAQ, MSCI World, G Market stocks, US bonds, gold, commodities, and cash. So, what is the outcome? So, if we compare that, we can see that the lowest value is obtained in gold. I mean, you invest $24,000 into the gold, and at the end, you will have $25,000. So, I mean, you will earn really nothing, you will just get what you invested over the 20 years. Cash is a little better, US bonds and commodities are one again a little better then there are emerging market stocks i mean what is surprising is that the 200 percent leverage u.s stocks so when you invest into leverage etf your expected return i mean the conservative return is lower than 25 percent of the u.s stocks of course in a median value you will get the most but as i said i mean we consider the median value as quite optimistic when you are more conservative i mean the nasdaq is better solution than invest into the leverage stocks but if you are lucky you can get the most when you invest into the leverage stocks but you must be really really lucky i mean the future 20 years must be extremely positive and in this case you can i mean get the most if you invest into leverage stocks but i mean it is not a very good idea to base the investment strategy or saving strategy and hoping for the best i mean it's usually better to be the conservative so that's the reason why we're looking at 25th percent so we try to buy all passive strategy and we try to improve it by investing 50% into leverage stocks and additional 50% into the bonds. Because leverage stocks have 200% exposure to stocks, we can just invest 50% of the portfolio and we should have the same risk as the 100% stocks that are, I mean, invested into ordinary ETF. The rest of the portfolio, like 50%, we can save into the bonds. How does the saving strategy look like if you invest into 50% leverage stocks and 50% bonds? What is surprising for me is that it looks nearly the same as the performance of the ordinary US stocks. I mean, when you look at 25th or 50th percentile, I mean, the numbers are nearly the same. So, I mean, there is like no additional advantage to uh, have the combination of average stocks and bonds. You can just save into ordinary US stocks. So it doesn't doesn't make sense. So then we tried active strategy. We tried to build a life cycle. What is the life cycle? So you start with the 100% allocation in US stocks in the first 15 years, and then we gradually shift into bonds. Then we compare that to life cycle approach with the leverage. So we started with an allocation of 200% leverage stocks. Over the time, we transition to US stocks. And at the end of the 15 years, once again, we move from the stocks to the bonds. The idea behind that is that we are trying to use the knowledge that at the beginning of the saving period, we are investing the money, but I mean, our whole portfolio is small. So even that we invest in very, very risky asset, I mean, underlying asset, in case there is some drawdown or we lose some money, I mean, it's not like a significant part of the whole 20 year period. So for the first five years, you can invest in a really, really risky asset. So we try to invest into 200 stocks and then gradually shift. And we try to compare that to investing to just US stocks. What are the results? Once again, our hope was that it will make more sense to invest into 200% leverage stocks at the beginning. But the number shows that, I mean, the difference is like negligible. There is a very, very small difference in 25th percentile or 50th percentile between a life cycle strategy that invests at the beginning into stocks or the life cycle strategy at the beginning invest into a leverage stocks. So it doesn't make sense in this case. So then we tried to find out what will happen if we try to build the saving strategy. And as underlying, we use the pragmatic asset allocation. So that's the model that we described in, in the other block and you are invited to see the other block. If we try to save into pragmatic asset allocation, our portfolio size in the conservative percentile, so in 25th percentile, is significantly better than to just invest into, into the life cycle strategy or leverage life cycle or just into US stocks. Drawdowns are significantly smaller. I mean, we have like half 
of the drawdown when you save into the stocks or half of the loss. I mean, why is that? The reason for that is because the volatility of the pragmatic asset allocation is significantly lower. So, I mean, at the beginning of the saving period, when you invest, I mean, the volatility is not bad because even that there is a significant drawdown and you are saving at the beginning when you invest in drawdown or save into the drawdown, I mean, you are buying underlying equities with a discount or very cheaply. And at the end of the period, it's even better for you uh, when there was a run at the beginning. But if there is a drawdown at the end of the period, or there is a high volatility at the end of the saving period, I mean, that can be a problem for a portfolio. And the uh, pragmatic asset allocation has a significant lower volatility. So when you invest into pragmatic asset allocation or you save into pragmatic asset allocation or any other active strategy that has lower drawdown than just holding the stocks, I mean, you can increase the result of the 25th percentile or 50th percentile. So what is the final sum of the portfolio that you were able to save? So once we understand understand that, we try to build the active life cycle, pragmatic asset allocation saving strategy. And in this starting strategy, so for the first two years, we invest into leverage stocks. So first two years are, I mean, not so important in the savings. In this case, we can invest or save really, really aggressively. So we can try to buy leverage stocks. And then from the third year, we gradually switch into the 65% of pragmatic asset allocation and the rest is the uh, leverage stocks. So we decrease the position in leverage stocks and we buy more pragmatic asset allocation into the life cycle saving strategy. The reason for that is because we would like to decrease the volatility and decrease the level of the risk of the portfolio because from the third year until year 10, you still do not have a lot of the money in your portfolio, but there are, I mean, more money. So you do not want to have like all of the money in the leverage stocks. You want to gradually shift into more active strategy with a lower drawdown. And then from the year 10, so once again, we are still holding the 65% in pragmatic asset allocation, but we are removing the leverage stocks and we are gradually shifting into just the ordinary stocks and bonds. This active life cycle strategy, and that's not using the passive funds as underlying, but is using the active strategy as an underlying for your savings, has the best final size on the 25th percentile. It has a higher drawdowns compared to just investing to the pragmatic asset allocation alone. But I mean, drawdowns and loss is plus or minus the same as the drawdown and loss just using the 100% of US stocks. But I mean, 25th percentile final size of the portfolio is higher by 20 or 30% dollars. Uh, so in this case is $53,000 in the case of 100% US stocks compared to $75,000, which is $20,000 more in your portfolio at the end of the saving. I hope that you like this blog post and this article. So we try to show you that it's not always the best way to save only into the passive portfolio. So it makes sense to gradually shift from risky assets into the more safe assets. And it also makes sense to incorporate the active strategy that you can use for savings, because I mean, you can start investing very aggressively and then you can gradually shift into the active strategy that has lower drawdowns, lower volatility as your portfolio grows and as you have more assets in your portfolio. And then at the end of the saving period, you can gradually shift into even more defensive portfolio. And in this case, uh, your drawdowns will be significantly lower. And I mean, the resultant sum that you are able to achieve at the end of the saving period is significantly higher. Thank you for attention. I hope that you will join me in the next video. Please give us a like if you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Are you interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.